Amen. Amen. I just was hoping this would be our general impression from what we got this week. This weekend. If we end up having the same impression, I think then the Lord would have gained what he's looking for. <coughs> if that is the impression we take from this weekend, then generally the Lord has gained what he was, what he's looking for. It's been such a nice time the last two days. A lot of things to think about and to consider. So today, just trying to summarize what we had. We'll read a verse. In First Timothy chapter 3, 14 to 15. First Timothy chapter three, fourteen to fifteen. These things I write to you, though I hope to come to you shortly. But if I am delayed, I rise so that you may know how you ought to conduct yourself in the house of God, which is the church, the living God, and the ground of the truth. Father Lord, we pray again that you, you give us an update. Help each one of us. We want to see you. We want to see the church. The church is heavenly. We pray that you also make us heavenly people. We will read this verse at the end of the fellowship. Just remember. But by then we have kind of sent quite some things. We're going to fellowship on just three items. The church, historical, and uh, location, historical, and meaning. I want to start that where we read, we will read it again. What do you call church in German? Kirche. Is it? Yeah? No, no. Forget Gemeinde. I'm coming somewhere. Gemeinde is what we know as a church, isn't it? But the English word church, what is it in German? Kirche, yeah? Okay. Now, we want to go back to how did this word become church. If you also try to check, you, you realize that the English word, like every other thing, evolves. Things are moving. And they are not moving towards God. They are moving far from God. So, and it's the enemy that is behind it. You know. You can agree with me. Even lately I heard in the, in the state of California, because of the gender problem, they're trying to remove some gender sensitive names. Like, I used to know that a place where you climb up to walk is called manhold, right? Yeah, either the manhood, even the sewage are up, okay. But they said you're going to change it, right? Right? Okay, so they're going to change it to maintenance hole. So, so the English word keeps evolving. I'm just trying to say that things have moved. And unfortunately, it's not moving towards God. It's moving out of God. So I, I know like 20 years ago, if you... If you go to the, if you check the internet, you can see the word church easily. But it's getting difficult. What you see is church building. There's an attachment. This is from the enemy. Location. 
because we all have certain kind of background about Christianity, when we talk about certain things, we come in with those background. So, in the old covenant, God dwells outside of man. So, God comes into the temple, right? So many of us, even in this room, still think that God comes into a building. True? We still feel that God's dwelling place is a physical place. So outside there, they've done their best to build cathedrals. In fact, in the Roman, they call church a similar word as basilica. So there is a direct relationship. They're trying to relate church to a building. And this is house of God, yeah? But the original word has been dropped. And so, the house of God you talk about in Greek is uh, kuriakos, something belonging to a Lord. So when this building is the, the house of God, kuriakos is Lord's, but in the Bible, this word in the New Testament came in two places, which is uh, the Lord's Day, right? And the Lord's Supper. You can read 1 Corinthians 11, verse 20. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 20. If you see, just read for us. Okay, all I want is, that's the word there, the Lord's Supper, that was changed to the other 115 places where the church was mentioned in the New Testament. The next place is also in Revelation chapter 1, verse 10. It calls it the Lord's Day, right? If you find it, please read. Okay, what I just want to bring out is these are where these, these two Greek words appear. Kuriakos, meaning something belonging to God. The Lord's Supper, the Lord's Day. So in translating it, the word Ecclesia was replaced with, with, with Kuriakos, meaning a building belonging to God. So we all have been taught by the original King James translators, which has an influence from Roman, to think that already by then they had buildings that looked like or that was called church. So today, subconsciously, even when we, some of us were coming here today, we said we were going to church, right? <laughs> we're going to the Lord's house, right? That's what we think. But I'm not sure it's the Lord that owns this house. No. <laughs> right? Okay. So, these things are following us. And unconsciously, we, it has come in to take us out of the real meaning of church, which is ecclesia, called out. Yeah? Called out. Right? So, the church is actually, we all, who have been called out. And you forgot it. There's a place in the Bible that says, where two or three are gathered, I am there in their midst. Right? It means that, permit me to use this word, there's, there's a little bit of the church in, the real church, if we're in the spirit, in all these brothers. So when they come together, it's an intensified presence of the Lord. So God is there in their midst. So the church is not a location. Now, if we get this very clear, then 
when we go to meet, we are going to meet. Like the brother was testifying to us, you can't come in empty. You must have, you have some Christ in you, some Christ in you, some Christ in you. So when we meet, the most important thing is not that we come together. The, most, the more important thing is what we do when we are not together. That is why some of the early brothers decided to say, no, the life we live is a church life. Right? So, trying to get out the real meaning. We used to meet in a place, and it was very interesting. When they see us, they say, these church people, it used to offend me, but now I think I like it. <laughs> these church people have come. We are actually church people. If you really understand what church means, we've been called out. Meaning, we've left a place out of everything. We have been translated into God's kingdom. So wherever we are, we are the church. So truly, we are the church people. You shouldn't feel bad if somebody calls you these church people, right? But we also have to be in the reality of the church people because the church people, they behave like Christ. Amen. <laughs> Actually, in in First Timothy, bringing me to what Mo ju just said, Lord Jesus, in First Timothy. I'm trying to jump to that. Oh Lord, Amen. In First Timothy, in chapter three, verse fourteen and thirteen. 14, 14. I'm trying to get the exact verse. He says, yeah. In verse 14, really. 14 and 15, really. He said, we can read it again. I just want to bring out something. He says, these things I write to you, though I hope to come to you shortly. But if I am delayed, I write so that you may know how you ought to conduct yourself in the house of God which is living of the living God, the pillar and the If you read this place very well, because the translation was not fair to it, and I'm going to take out the words and bring it out a little bit clearer. What has been placed in your mind is that the church is house, isn't it? When you read it, you think the church is a house, right? Yeah? Because he also puts some words to support it. Pillar and base. The house has a pillar, isn't it? And it has a foundation, right? Okay. I just brought that again so that we would not digress too much. But we will see how that place should be rendered. We already know about the temple. So, based on what we've been told about the church... With our Old Testament understanding about the temple, it makes some, makes some sense that the, the, the church is a temple, right? Right? Yeah. I think it makes sense, right? Because even when, when uh, Solomon prayed to dedicate the, the temple, right? There was a cloud. God came into the temple, right? So... In our mind, all these things are playing in our mind. So the church must be a physical place, isn't it? I have a very strong Catholic background. When you enter the church and the priest comes in, 
He now says that the Eucharist, the Holy Eucharist is in the temple. So in other words, the whole place has become holy. <laughs> right? No, I'm serious. So even when you come in right from the door, you have to be holy. Or you can be unholy outside. No, no, no. Do everything you want. When you go to where they are meeting right now, you have to be holy. <laughs> You've not been to a cathedral before. You can't stand up to testify in a cathedral. You have to be you have to be holy. Because we have been sold this, forgive me, crap that the church is a physical building. Unfortunately, our neighbors say the same thing. So your neighbor asks you, you're going to church. You say yes. But you're not going to church. You're church yourself. Right? <laughs> I don't want to go into a lot of historical things, but it's also good for us to understand some things. A lot of things have been played on our mind, and so we are beginning to buy it unconsciously. But let's go really to... I'm trying to fix myself within the time, eh? Oh, Lord. Jesus Christ. The actual meaning is ecclesia, meaning called out once. And I want to support this with what the scripture says and for you to see that there is something wrong somewhere. Acts chapter 2, we're going to be fast a little bit. Acts chapter 2, verse 46. Please, if you find it, you read for, for sake of time. Okay. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, Okay, so where was the church then? Okay, you said it. Then we can read again Romans chapter 16, verse 5. If you find it, just read. I just want to get something clear. Whoa, it's getting even more difficult. I can church be in your house. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 19. 16, yeah. Okay. The churches of Asia greet you. Aquila and Priscilla greet you heartily in the Lord with the church that is in their house. Whoa. <laughs> there was a cathedral they built inside their house. Colossians chapter 4 verse 15. Read All the brothers there were busy building churches in their house. <laughs> now you can agree with me that something is wrong with the translation. And we've been sold it. We bought it. Because the intent was to make us not to realize that he says 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16. I just want to take it out of the Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. This is all that the enemy is doing. If he can succeed in making us know, or if he can remove it from us that we are the temple. So you know what we do? The temple is somewhere, so I can live anyhow I want. Right? So on Sunday, I wear my nice holy dress. Right? And then I go there, and somebody speaks to us, the professional preachers, right? And you're fine. You go again for another seven days. Now, trust me with that, 
you can't make it to the kingdom. I'm serious. But that's what the enemy is planning. So if we all live in this realization that the church is somewhere, then that means we don't need to be holy because somewhere is holy. When I go there, I'll get holy, right? <laughs> but that's it. That's what we have been sold. So when you're going to church on a Sunday, you know, you have to look at the kind of dress you need to wear. Do you do that? Because you're going to a holy place. Because you're not holy. So you need to go to a place so you can become holy. Sorry, am I speaking to myself? Sometimes that is the concept we have. The somewhere is holy. Not me being holy. I was speaking to some young people and they said, Oh, okay, where do you want to walk? Where do you want to... Okay. Say, I want to, I want to go to a place that is blessed. God, that's a new word. You want to go to, maybe you want to work in Rebecca's office because they're meeting there. So we should all go there and work, right? But let me shock you. You are the blessing. When you enter a place, that place because of you becomes blessing. So you are carrying. The blessing. You are the one who is the blessing. You're not going to meet a blessed place. Now, if we are careful, then the Lord will have opportunity to change our concept. That we are carrying the embodiment of God. When the brothers are there, when the saints are there, it doesn't matter again. Why? Because God is there. You are the church. Really. You know, don't worry, I'm looking at the time. <laughs> I will cherry pick. So, It is better to begin to look at that place we read. Go back to First Corinthians, uh, First Timothy chapter three, verse fourteen. The word there is not house of God, really. It is household, right? If these things get clearer, we will understand the scriptures better because. As time goes on, some people have even dropped quite some things. He says, If I am delayed, I rise so that you may know how you ought to conduct yourself. It is not in a physical place. Right? It's household. A family. When you are in a family, like I have a family. Two of my kids are in Hamilton. Does it mean it's another family? It's a family. Right? This is the household. So whether you're physically here or you're somewhere downtown working, are you alienated from the family? You're still part of the family. This is, it. This is what the church is. It is not that when we are here, then we're a family. Oh, praise the Lord. We're a family, right? But this is household of God. God's family. I need to tell you something. There are ways families behave. Families have culture, isn't it? What is our culture here? Christ. Christ. One time I was in Fountain Valley. I don't know whether I was with Philip. I don't know whether it was you. Two German brothers were there. Maybe when I tell the story, you'll remember whether you were the one. <laughs> so we came for the conference, and it was to start by nine. We were in the, the Marriott, right? Was it Marriott? Yeah, Marriott. And it takes like 15 minutes to get there, right? And thank God you're here, so I'm not making stories. Sharon was to come to pick us. Sharon is your mom, isn't it? Okay. Okay, so we came out 15 minutes. We were supposed to be out in the lobby 15 minutes to 9. So these German brothers, they keep to time, like on the second, right? <laughs> they came down exactly, thank God I've been with them so much. I learned them a lot. I tried to don't play this my African time, right? So, 
I come to I come down and the two brothers were beside me. Fifteen minutes to nine. Oh my god. This one looked at his watch, this one looked at his watch, and they looked at themselves. Were you the one? I can't remember. You know what one said? They it's as if they said the same time. I thought Sharon was born in Germany. <laughs> Do you understand what that means? In other words, if Sharon was born in Germany, has she been influenced by the Americans? In other words, they expect her to be here 15 minutes to 9. When did Sharon come? That's the next story. <laughs> they didn't finish what they're saying. Bam! A text message came into one of them phone. Sharon said, I'll be late in two minutes. Wow. And before you knew it, Sharon was by the corner. This is the culture in Germany, isn't it? Yes. This is a family culture. So, Christ is our culture. Christ is our culture. Whether you're here, you're outside, there's one culture. There's Christ. Oh, Lord. I pray the Lord will clear our eyes. And, and make us understand that as long as this concept about church being a physical place is, we would now know that we are carrying Christ wherever we are. The saints are not there. Nobody is there. We are carrying Christ. This is the only way we can leave Christ. So that when we come together, we bring our rich experiences and enjoyment. It's actually supposed to be when we come together, it's supposed to be celebrate what we've done outside. But most of us, by the time we come here, we are, you need to do some work to get the saints into their spirit, right? Because they were beaten from outside. But don't get me wrong, even if you're beaten from outside, still come in. Praise the Lord. But in reality, our daily life is a life the brother got the word out. We should be living in the spirit. This is the church life. If we can get that, and then also knowing that the things that we've been reading, when we come to the word, we pray that the Lord will give us understanding. You know, I promised myself I was going to come back and I'm watching the time to this particular verse. Like we were sharing this weekend, the, the matter of the church is so big and deep. You don't even know how to touch it, but we pray that the Lord will somehow, as we go on, or clear our concepts by the Holy Spirit. And the things which you have heard this weekend, take them back to the Lord. And may the Lord give you understanding. The verse we read, because already there was the basilica in Rome, when the new King James was being translated, certain, times, certain things were forced to comply with what was already existing. And one of them is this matter of the church. So because the church has already been seen as a building, the places here where it was used, Sometimes it doesn't make sense. But we read it. And we also need to pray that the Lord will clear us. If from our understanding of the original writings, that this is not just house, it's a family, right? And uh, in the family, the last part of verse 15 of where we are reading, I just wanted to concentrate on there. He says, which is the pillar, no, which is the, the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of the truth. Okay. Who is the truth? Christ is the truth. Because he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And who is the head of the church? So Christ is the head, right? So the church has to be the pillar. What does pillar do? Hold. Pillar and the base 
of the truth, which is Christ. No, I'm trying to describe something. I pray the Lord will give us understanding. Christ is the head, right? The pillar and the base of the truth. So the church is the expression of the truth, who is Christ. That's what the church is. If you get anything other than that, then it's not the church. Because Christ is the truth. The church is the pillar and the base that supports. So when you see the church, you should see Christ. Now let me reread that verse again. My time is up. Okay. He says, These things I write to you, though I hope to come to you shortly. But if I am delayed, I write so that you may know how you ought to conduct yourself in the family of God, which is household of God, right? Which is the called out ones of the living God. The supporting pillar and the holding base of the truth. That's what the church is. Other than that, we see it as a different thing. If the church is the counterpart of Christ. Did I say something different? He is the head of the church. Ephesians. Right? Christ, when he appears, we will fit him as a church. So this is a process of transforming us. When the Lord said in Matthew 16, you are Peter. Why didn't he say you're Simon? His name was Simon. Because Simon is flesh. And he, he didn't waste time to exhibit that he's flesh. But the Lord had faith. That's why he called him Peter. You're going to be a transformed stone. And upon this I will build my church. The church is not built on any human thing. It is the spirit. Sometimes don't be too Hard on yourself. Pray to the Lord. Lord, open my eyes that I may see the church. Praise the Lord.